Hey everyone, this is Trevor here. So today we'll be solving the second problem from the Ad Coder DP series, that is the Frog 2. Now this problem is pretty similar to the Frog 1 problem, that is the first problem of the Ad Coder DP series. If you haven't watched that problem, I'll highly recommend you to get back and watch Frog 1's video first, and then you can continue with this one. So what does the problem state? The problem states you'll be given a frog, will be standing at the first index, and you'll be given a value k. So starting from the first, you got to reach till the last and in doing so, what you can do is you can only jump till three indexes from the index where you are standing. That means if you are standing at the first, you can either jump to here or to here or to here because that is what three means. Three index after the current index, you cannot jump directly to here. So whenever you move from one index i to index j. The cost is nothing but a of i minus a of j and the absolute of it. So assume you are at 10. So if you are moving to 40, then you are moving to 20. So the cost incurred over here will be 30, 20. So the total cost is 50. Let's say from 10, you move to 30 and then from 30, you move to 20. 10 to 30 is possible because that's at a distance of 1 and 30 to 20 is again possible because that is at a distance of 2. So the cost taken over here will be 20 and the cost taken over here will be 10. So the total cost is nothing but 30. So you got to try all the possible combinations and whoever gives you the minimum cost, you got to take this. Like in this case, we will get a minimum cost of 30. So 30 is our answer. Like if we take this example, if the frog is standing over here, so he can only move to four indexes beyond this index that means up till 80 he can move let's say from 40 he moves to 70 from 70 he moves to again 70 and from this 70 he moves to this 60 so what will be the total cost the total cost incurred will be 30 0 and 10 which makes it a sum of 40 so if you try out all other combinations, you will find out that 40 is the minimum cost so 40 is our answer so the problem exclusively says that you got to find out the minimum cost in the first problem of this ad code dpc that is the frog one if you're standing at any given index you're only allowed to move till index plus one and index plus two so we did write a dp solution for that but over here if you're standing at any given index you can move to index plus one index plus two and so on till index plus three now this frog two problem can be treated as a frog one problem if k is equal to 2 in that case you will only move to index plus 1 and index plus 2 and this problem can be solved but if k is generalized then you gotta move till index index plus 1 index plus 2 and so on till index plus 3 so what will be our states of this problem assume you are standing at the first index and you can move to f of 2 similarly you can move to f of 3 f of 4 f of 5 and till f of 1 plus k like if k is 1, that means you can move till f of 2. If k is 2, you can move till f of 3. If k is 4, you can move till f of 4 and so on. So in frog 1, we saw the states where index plus 1 and index plus 2. But over here, we know for a given index, the state will be index plus 1, index plus 2 and so on till index plus k. So we can see a pattern forming here that is from 1 to k. In the previous problem, we just had two states. So we could have simply written f of index plus 1 and f of index plus 2. But over here, we have k different states that we can visit to. That means if we are standing at a given index, we can visit to index plus 1 and go until index plus k. So you are observing a pattern from 1 to k. So instead of writing them manually, we can run a for loop that ranges from index plus 1 to index plus k and our task is done. So bearing this, everything remains same, whatever we did in frog 1. So what will be the complexity of this? In the frog 1 problem, we know if you are standing at any given index, we can move to index plus 1 and index plus 2. So the complexity over there was n into 2. Why? Because at max, the value of index can lie between 1 and n. And we know for every given state, we can have two different states to visit. That is why the complexity was n into 2. But over here, the value of index can lie between 1 and n and for every given state, we will have k different states at maximum. So we can say the complexity over here will be n into k. And if we check out the constraint, the constraint has 10 to the power 5 as n and k as 100. 
so that gives you around 10 to the power 7 which fits the time limit so let's quickly check out how the code look like so in the code what i've done is i've declared everything as globally and since the maximum value of a was 10 to the power 5 i've taken it as 10 to the power 5 plus 5 just for the safety reasons and then i've taken nnk as the input and then i've taken the array is the input so i've called this function with one why because that is the first index where we start from so i've started from the index one and then i know if i'm standing at a given index where can i move so let's write that we know that we have to write a for loop so our for loop will start from index plus one because that is the first index till which we can move and what is the minimum index till which i can move that is index plus k or n why because it might happen index plus k exceeds n so we cannot go to that index because we know at max we can go up till index n so we will move up till the minimum of n or index plus k so what will be the cost the cost will be nothing but absolute of a of i minus a of index because in moving from index to index i the cost incurred is a of i minus a of n absolute and then since we have reached i we know from i we have to reach till index n so who will calculate that cost cost will be calculated by the function i since we're trying all the possible combination like from index we're moving till index plus one index plus two index plus three now whichever combination will give us the minimum we will take that similar to the thing that we did in the problem frog one and then we will return the minimum of all of the states now this code will have a exponential complexity so how will you convert this exponential complexity to something that fits the time limit so to do that you got to use memorization so what you'll do is you will initially take this dp array of the same size of the array and fill it up with minus one so we can easily fill it up with minus one using this so using memset we are filling up the dp as minus one or you can write over here as dp of i equal to minus one that is your choice and once you have done that how will you convert this recursive code to memorization and before returning what you need to do is you got to memorize so that if there are any sub problems where this is required you can easily take it up and whenever a new function call comes you got to simply check if that value has previously occurred or not that means if that index has been previously visited then we must have stored some value over here Hence, this dp of index will not be minus 1 because initially we stored minus 1. So, since the answer has already been stored, so we do not need to compute this again. So, we can simply return the answer that is stored. And in adding these two lines, we can convert a recursive into a dynamic programming code which fits our time limit. So, if we run this code, we will see the answer comes as 40 which was the expected one. So, the time complexity is n into k and the space complexity required is O of n. So this is all about the video. Now let's talk about connecting. If you want to connect me over LinkedIn, this is my profile. If you want to join our Telegram channel, the link is in the description. If you have liked the video, press the like button. If you have disliked the video, press the dislike button. If you are new to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and to press the bell icon.